gonna do uh, something that's called uh, mapping. You guys are familiar with that? Okay. Um, we're gonna need uh, to see in close. We're gonna make it with oils. No, we should make it with, with acrylics because of the drying times. But we can do it on different panels so I don't have to go on the same panel again. Yeah. You work with, with, with oils? No? No one works with oils? That's a future. <laughs> I love oils. Um, Okay, we're gonna um, thin or, or, or mix it in small quantities with this product. This is the odorless thinner from AK. Um, people say that you can use any thinner. That's not true. Um, thinners are refined in different ways. I'm not a chemist or anything. I have used up almost every kind of thinner I can put my hands on. And this is so refined that it dries almost in seconds it mixes with everything. It blends beautiful. If you use a heavy thinner or, or a thinner you got at a drugstore, it's gonna break the paint. It's not gonna blend it. So I advise you, any brand that you want, use modeling thinner. Especially this one because it doesn't smell. So um, I, I should put that here. I already put it here, so it's more comfortable. Okay. So with the mapping, we're gonna uh, start to give the whitewash a certain look. We just uh, press it here, we load a little paint. And we start to imagine in your, in your, in your mind that you are seeing continents or, 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 or countries of shape, of shape of countries. So you start over here, be random, always be random. So you start to bring the, the white to pop. You start to give the the, the characteristics of a, of a, of, a, of a washing out paint. Um, you can also help yourself and simulate a, a, a brush stroke or or a cloth stroke to say it that way. You can do it like this. Okay. I like to use oils because they are so forgiving. I just got to take the clothes and raise it everything. With acrylics, you have to be more careful. Yeah, they dry so fast. Yeah, once they dry, you're done. I have to pass it to you guys so you can see it up close because the detail is it's pretty small. But the application, you see it's nothing fancy, just loading your brush with white uh, oil, 
Not too much because then you're gonna, you're gonna have to clean more. Um, always uh, clean uh, with, with a thinner. You can load, take a, this. That's nothing. It's nothing. So you can just put it here. You will see everything little like dot or something that catches your eye, it's the oil. Because since you're modelers, you know that an airbrush doesn't have that um, variety. To s now, you can, you can go heavy on it, it's not going to affect you since it's oils. You just can't just brush it away. Um, with acrylics, we can, we can try with acrylics. Um, I use both. Uh, first, I use uh, the acrylic. Uh, to do the larger, uh, the larger masses, the larger, you're, you're, you're going to see what I mean. And I then use the oils to do the streaking, to do the, 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 the fading, uh, the fading paint from those, uh, oil, uh, dots, from those acrylic oil dots. You see, uh, you see the oil work? Yeah, you can definitely see the contrast. That's it. That's that's a word. It's contrast. You you need to achieve contrast, almost in everything. A slight contrast, I mean, not, yeah. not something that sticks out like a not sore thumb. Yeah. But Subtle. yeah. But you see, the white wash is just not just not the uh, a wash of, uh, a paint with 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 an airbrush. It has some layers. You can see it in here in the story. This is the best example I can show you. This is oils. Everything is oils here. Here. Holy this one. Yeah. Uh, when you work with oils, you should uh, put them in a piece of cardboard first for uh, half an hour so the linseed oil bleeds out. You don't want linseed oil in your models because it could leave a sheen. It's hard to, hard to, to to get rid of, so just put it in a piece of cardboard and you'll see like an oil around it. So we're gonna do it with acrylic, so you can see um, the difference. And some water. One, two, Sorry for that. <laughs> oh my. You guys can relate. You do the same. Oh yes. Okay, so um, I like to go to to the edges. I like to work the edges first. Well. It's a little more more stark, more contrast, since acrylics they're they're not made to be blended. I mean, you can do it right away. Do you see how much paint I'm using? Not not too much. You. You want control, and that's, uh, that's something that you need to, to have in mind. You need to control things. If you use too much, it's going to make a mess. If you want to simulate a paint like that, it looks horrible. I advise you to use that with oils. But I like to take risks. <laughs> No, it doesn't. Work. 
Okay, so I did it a little more. I overdone it so you can see it. You can see the the the, the heavy strokes. That's the point. Um, it shouldn't be done all over the the whitewash. Um, you shouldn't uh, cover. I mean, you shouldn't use a technique all over the model. The the beauty of this is to be selective. Um, if you're gonna heavy chip one fender, go slightly with the other one. Don't do the both fenders the same, because that's when when things start like get dull. And it's, oh yeah. But if you keep me guessing, if I see something that's not here, it's, it's gonna get my interest on. It's gonna. And what did he did that? And you start looking and paying attention and, and asking yourself things. So that's uh, that's the goal, to keep me guessing, to keep me interested. So um, I will consider this, the mapping, uh, to be the, the step that really makes the whitewash shine. Because it's, it's, if, if not, it's just uh, spray paint. Uh, people tend to only uh, spray it and weather it in, in top of it. And that's gonna make, that's not gonna look so, so let's say good or interesting. No, no se ve. No se ve, no se ve, acá se ve mejor. Okay. Now, um, we're, we need to weather this. Uh, one thing is to, to make the whitewash, and the other thing is to uh, weather things. Uh, things to consider when weathering that you can have, it is that you can have a, 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 a recently built model, or in, let's say in real life, a recently built tank, or wherever you're, you're building, and it can be dirty, but it can be new. There are differences between new and dirty. You can have a beat up to hell tank, they've just been washed. So there are two, two things that people don't, um, don't realize, I don't wanna say ignore, but people don't realize that there are two principles, two concepts. All the new and clean and dirty. I have seen, for example, uh, I saw once uh, a Sherman, it was a, 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 a D-Day uh, scenery, a uh, diorama, and that Sherman was beat to hell. It was chipped all over the place, it was bent. I mean, that, it was like, that doesn't ring my bell. I mean, those tanks were fairly new. They were dirty. I mean, all the, the, the transport and everything, you can have some scratch over, over there, but, so I told to, I, we started talking with him and said, yeah, the war and everything, yeah, okay. So I explained it. You have new things, old things, dirty things, and clean things. So, yeah, hey, it makes sense. I <laughs> said, yeah. Um, so when you mix the two, you have something interesting. But it is important to keep in mind that you can make a, a really beat up model clean. You don't, make, you don't need to, 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 to weather it. Or you can do the opposite. So, since I like to play with mud, we're gonna, um, we're gonna wear it with animals, with animals. We're gonna use uh, this product streaking grime. This color, I like it. It's especially for, for winter camouflages. And that's, that's the thing, don't let marketing fool you. At the end of the day, these are all colors. There is nothing special with Africa dust, which I use it everywhere. So I don't tend to look at the, at the, at the labels, I just look it down. So I start to use the colors that I think that I'm gonna need. If I'm gonna make uh, a dry mud, I'm gonna go with the lighter ones. I don't care if it's from Africa, from Kursk, from Transylvania or whatever. For me, are just colors. I, I don't see labels, that's important. But in this case, this color, it's pretty odd, it's weird, it's, it's a green one. That goes beautiful with a Russian whitewash. You're gonna see why. You can pass it through. But it has oil, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Thank you. 
Take it. Yeah. Okay, you can use this product directly from the bottle. I don't, I don't do it. I like to put a, uh, what I'm going to use here because if I bump into something that's not an open bottle, <laughs> it happened before. So. so I tend to have just a small amount here. Um, you don't need to thin it. You don't need to do anything. Um, just um, make sure it's pretty well mixed. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to simulate grind. <coughs> the streaking grind should always, and that's, I'm going to have to say that always, have to go your, mo your streaking from, upward, from an upward position down. Okay, so. Don't do the exact same lines all over the, the place you're, 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 you're gonna, you can do it more, inten more high intensity here or slightly here or here nothing and just here. Because as, he's, as you said, you need contrast and you got to be random. You just let it dry for a second here. <laughs> Flat brush. It's gonna simplify things. Um, don't con don't confuse uh, this type this type of streaking with uh, rust streaks because the rust streaks are pretty specific. They need to have um, they have to be first uh, not so much because it's gonna look like your tank is bleeding. So um, that's a, another kind of, of, of streaking. You, you here, you can be general. You just load with, uh, the, with the same thinner, load a little bit. I would say it's almost dry. Always clean your brush because if you don't do that, you're gonna just be putting paint here and moving it to here. So if you clean your brush, it's gonna make the the effect better. You have to see it up close. This is what I consider the first step of the weathering. You can just... Um, the, 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 the beauty of, of animals, or enamels, I don't know how to say, um, it's that they work almost like oils. You can, uh, you can leave them for minutes there and you come back and they're still working. If you think that you messed up something, you just clean it off with a with a thinner, it's good to go. You just restart. And what I like to do is um, use this color, um, and we can use uh, some oils. Um, you can use any oils that you like. I would recommend uh, good ones. Um, oils are kind of expensive. Uh, Windsor and Newton, those are the best. Even those uh, need to be, uh, uh, you need to bleed out the, the linseed oil. Some say that you don't, no, that's a lie, you need to. Even this one that's made from modeling, you need to bleed the linseed oil out. It dries faster, you can, you can do more things without waiting them for to, to dry. So that's a really good investment. These tubes will last you for forever. Yep. I have them for almost 10 years. If you close them. What? If you keep them closed. Yes. Oh, no, of course. <laughs> no, no, no. You have to take care of your, of your paint. Yeah, for, for sure. I find that the, the oil brushes dry really fast. Yeah. They're designed that way, yeah. so you can work faster. You know, they, 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 you can have all the models, all the paints, but you don't have. You can lack one thing: it's time. So you can see if you don't like it. 
you didn't like something. There you go. It's gone. You see, okay, I'm going to make a, another one that's, that's better. I'm going to go like this. Just wait until it dries. I'm just rushing things here a little bit. Okay, so now you start to get uh, color contrast. Instead of, 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 uh, of surface contrast, you start to get color. Um, I like to use this color. Um, it's, no, it's not uh, this one. It's called dark mud. Even though it's not uh, brown, it's more gray. You're going to see. But for the scale, it is very versatile. It looks beautiful almost everywhere. Now you can do the same process, the same uh, the same technique with a new different color. Um, I wouldn't recommend to apply like the same amount or, or the same streaks that you do with the, with the other color. Vary and use just a couple. One here. It's getting dry already. One here. Okay, you'll see there's a, a slight, a slight uh, change in colors. Yeah. That's going to add yeah. something more to look at it. But this color, it's really good to... Layering. Uh, not layering. No. For example, if you want to... We're, we're now entering yeah, um, um, uh, the weathering process with... Uh, earth tones and stuff. You can simulate the shadow here or grime. A bit more. And this is where the where the oil shine. Always on load. Pretty simple. Just have the patience to to blend it and achieve la almost like a fade. But please take a look over here, and you'll see um, a slight fading. What can be called grime, and it's going to help you with uh, with the shadows of, of of your of your models. I don't appreciate. I don't do that anymore. Um, I shade with oils. I have a lot more control. And I find pre-shading. I, I respect the guys who do it. It's old school. Um, but I find pre-shade uh, too stark. I mean, there's something that never caught my eye with a pre-shade. Um, you have to, uh, I don't know, a really good painter, not to, be not, not to uh, the people to notice it. <coughs> So I prefer to be very, very specific with oils in certain pa uh, places of the tank and, and achieve a shadow. Yeah, the, the main thing with the pre-shade is that you pre-shade the whole tank or the whole airplane. So everything looks the same. You see the same line on top, on here, and the wings on here. It's like, okay, so respect it, but <laughs> I find oils work better. 
Carlos, did you want to take a quick 15 minute break? If you guys say it, yeah, no problem. Whatever you guys want. If you guys want to be going, let's go. Want to smoke break? 